How far are modern VR headsets really from matching the resolution of the human eye? Big money is being invested in VR tech to see how it can help reduce feelings of isolation amongst the elderly. And Japanese tech brand Sharp are planning their own VR headset launch, but it's not entirely clear who it's for. All that and more coming up in this episode of The Virtual Lowdown. What's going on, virtual friends? Welcome to The Virtual Lowdown, the show where I bring you the latest and most exciting news going on in the VR world. Today, we've got some particularly interesting stories for those of you that are interested in the future of VR technology. So let's get into it. All right, so let's dive into some new research that could reshape how we think about visual fidelity in VR. And it looks like our VR headsets might have a lot further to go than we initially thought. So researchers from the University of Cambridge and Meta's Applied Perception Science team collaborated on a study exploring how much detail the human eye can truly resolve. The experiment used a 27-inch 4K display on a sliding rail with subjects viewing patterns and text at distances between 1.1 and 2.7 meters while their heads were fixed in place using one of those kind of like chin rests that you have at the eye doctors. So they measured clarity using pixels per degree or PPD, which is a pretty standard metric for describing how many pixels the viewer sees per degree of visual field. And for years, 60 PPD was kind of considered retinal resolution, supposedly matching 2020 vision. But this study shows that our eyes can actually perceive much finer detail. So looking at the results, for grayscale patterns, people averaged a discernibility of up to 94 PPD. When it came to red-green patterns, it dropped a little bit to 89 PPD. And for yellow-violet patterns, it had a significant drop down to 53 PPD. So what does this mean? Well, basically the idea that a 60 PPD is at retina level already is pretty outdated. And the study suggests that the real upper limit could be 90 or 100 PPD or even higher. So how close are our current headsets to matching that kind of clarity? For comparison, the MetaQuest 3 only has around 25 PPD. Meanwhile, the Quest 2 has 20 PPD, and the Apple Vision Pro has an estimated 34 PPD based on a teardown analysis. And even Meta's advanced prototype Tiramisu reportedly hit around 90 PPD, but that was only across a very narrow field of view of about 33 degrees, so that's really small, that's like basically looking at your screen through your hand and like this which is not the ideal scenario. So basically what that means is that today's best consumer headset, the Vision Pro, delivers only about a third of what the human eye is actually capable of perceiving. So even though these headsets already look incredibly sharp, we're still very far from true retina level VR. Reaching a 90 plus PPD across a wide field of view will require major breakthroughs in both optics, display tech, and GPU performance. But that poses the question, if the human eye can resolve, say, 90 ppd or more will people actually notice the difference once we get there or have we already or are we close to reaching that point of good enough when it comes to immersion because remember there are trade-offs when it comes to increasing the ppd such as a reduced fov and fov is also a very important factor when it comes to vr immersion so i definitely think there is going to be a balance that will have to be struck where we get to a point of visual fidelity of sharpness that is good enough it's close enough to the maximum human resolution and then we kind of invest our resources into improving other elements of the VR experience. And for our next story, let's take a look at an interesting new entry into the VR headset world. One that's taking a slightly different route with an ultra lightweight design. So Sharp has announced the I have no idea how to pronounce this, XRO Stellar VR1. That's how I'm going to be saying it. No idea if it's right. But this is basically a lightweight VR headset that is intended for both PC and smartphone tethered use, which is an interesting one. Now, its key highlight feature is the fact that it weighs only 198 grams, making it one of the lightest headsets announced so far. It's got dual LCD panels at 2160 by 2160 pixels per eye and a refresh rate of 90 hertz. The field of view 
view, however, is only 90 degrees, making it significantly less than other competing headsets. It does still, however, use pancake lenses, which are described as light efficient to reduce bulk. So they're really leaning into the lightweight aspect of this headset. It's also got inside out six DOF tracking using two grayscale cameras, and it's got one color pass through camera for your real world view. However, with only one pass through camera, that means it's most likely going to be lacking the depth of field that usually requires two cameras to accomplish. The headset does come with tracked hand controllers, but as you can see in the picture here, they resemble like the old Quest 2 controllers with the big tracking rings around the sides, which, you know, is a very outdated and kind of clunky design, so I'm not really sure why they've gone for that here. They've got an adjustable IPD between 58 and 71 millimeters, and a diopter adjustment of 0D to minus 9D built in so that nearsighted users might not need to get separate prescription lenses. It's initially being designed for only PC use, but it could also be compatible with other smartphones. Initially, it's confirmed to be compatible with Sharp's own Aquas Sense 10 via a wired connection, but they said that they will be opening it up to other smartphones later down the line. Now, one thing that's a little bit odd about this is that for a big company like Sharp, I'm not sure why they're going for the crowdfunding approach using a Japanese crowdfunding platform, Green Funding. That's a bit odd to me, but maybe they're just trying to like test the waters and see kind of like gauge the amount of interest that there is around the product before doing like a full production of it but not really sure either way we'll find out soon enough because it is set to launch at the end of november 2025 so the ultra light design is clearly a standout feature here but the display resolution and especially the fov are definitely leaving a lot to be desired when compared to a lot of its other competitor headsets but because the form factor is so light there are also questions about like the strap and the weight distribution and how well it will actually be able to perform for longer play sessions. So the XR Obstella VR1 <laughs> illustrates an alternative to the usual VR hardware emphasis. It's not all about pixels and better FOV, but also lightweight and better comfort and easier wearability do have value when it comes to the VR experience. But if you wear a VR headset for a long time and for long gaming sessions, let me know would you prefer to sacrifice some visual fidelity, so have a slightly smaller FOV, for example, for a much lighter and more comfortable VR headset that you could play for longer? For me, I still think it's gonna be a hard sell. With these specs, the only way I see it being considered as like a legitimate option at all is if it comes with a very competitive price tag. Otherwise, people would basically just buy the Quest 3S, which has a cheap price, a wider FOV, standalone capability, and a much more developed ecosystem. By the way, if you're enjoying the content so far and you want to keep up with the latest VR news, updates, reviews, guides, and all of that good stuff, then just consider hitting the subscribe button just down below real quick. I'm currently working my way up to my first 2,000 subscribers, and it might not seem a lot to you guys, but it means a whole lot to me. So if you enjoy the content, I highly appreciate any support I can have from you guys. The company Endeavor is getting a 4.5 million US dollar grant to promote positive VR experiences for elders. So here's a slightly different one from the VR world. It's not all about headsets and specs, but instead how immersive technology is helping older adults stay connected. So Rendeva has secured nearly four and a half million US dollars in grant funding from the National Institutes of Health, or NIH, and the funding includes approximately 3.8 million US dollars for Rendeva's Thrive at Home program, plus additional funds to develop a VR-based caregiver support network. So the focus of Rendeavor here is to use VR platforms to combat social isolation among older adults, especially those aging in place like in an old person's home or separated from family. The initiative will partner with research organizations, for example, Rand Corporation, Right at Home, which is a home care services provider, and the University of California, Santa Barbara, to evaluate impact and scale. Previous trials by Rendeva suggest that social VR experiences can reduce stress and depression among families, especially when dealing with dementia or Alzheimer's related situations. So this is important because it broadens VR's narrative beyond gaming and entertainment into health and well-being, and it shows that immersive tech can be a tool for social connection and not just a visual spectacle. I really am beginning to see more and more potential in VR as a social platform, and it just goes to show that the value of VR technology goes far beyond simple entertainment. So if VR can meaningfully reduce isolation for older adults, 
How soon could this become a standard in senior care settings or homes? I'm very curious to stay up to date with how this progresses because I really see a lot of potential in VR tech in like old person homes and elderly homes to really liven up the day for people who are maybe not physically as abled or people who are far away from friends and family. So I can even see like specific apps or even specific headsets being built for use with the elderly. So imagine headsets that are built to be super lightweight because you know, elderly people aren't gonna have super strong necks to support heavy headsets. They'll need to be lightweight and have a strong focus on like a simple UI. So making it really easy to use and navigate. I think something like that could have a lot of potential and could vastly improve the experience for some elderly people who are stuck in less than ideal conditions. And to close off the video, here's a quick discount for those of you that are in the market for a new VR headset. But basically, Meta's official eBay store, which sells certified refurbished units, has dropped the price on the 128 gigabyte version of the Quest 3S down to just 216 US dollars using the code tech for them. The same code also brings the 512 gigabyte variant of the Quest 3 down to approximately 360 US dollars. The refurbished units include the full bundle, so tracked hand controllers, original accessories, and a two year warranty, which is actually longer than you get on like a brand new headset. So for new VR buyers or those of you who are considering getting into VR but not entirely sure about forking out the full price, well this is a very low entry cost for a standalone headset that has full tracking and mixed reality capabilities and can link up to a computer if that's your jam. And the fact that it comes with an extended two year warranty means it's a relatively low risk. So if you've been delaying purchasing a headset and you live in the US, this could be the big sale that you've been waiting for. For those of you who aren't in the US but still are looking to pick up a Quest 3 or a Quest 3S and want to get a little bit more for your money, well, you can use the code MOOSE at checkout on the official Meta store. And if you're picking up a Quest 3S, that'll get you free $30 of Quest cash with your purchase. So you can use that to basically get like your first game or two totally for free, no extra cost. And of course, you'll be supporting my small channel, so I highly appreciate anyone that uses my code for basically anything. By the way, the code Moose also works on Quest games as well, so if you're looking to pick up a game that isn't on sale, literally just type in the code Moose at checkout and you'll save 10% for literally nothing. And that is gonna be it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed getting a little glimpse into the future of VR technology with me today. If you did, Appreciate it if you leave me a little like that really goes a long way to support the channel and if you're new here hit that subscribe button and keep up to date with future VR news updates reviews and guides from myself. Other than that hope you guys have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next one.